your home for over 17 years of horse racing action. The Sport of Kings, featuring Tommy Wolski. On today's show, courtesy of our friends at HRTV, we relive Russell Bays in his drive for the all-time riding title. We look at the career of Lost in the Fog. We step into the Santa Anita starting gate. We'll check in on the long history of the San Juan Capistrano. And now here he is, BC's ambassador to the world of horse racing, Mr. Tommy Wolski. When we first began this program back in 1992, our goal was to show you what goes on behind the scenes of horse racing, not only here in British Columbia, but also throughout North America. Well, that time has finally come thanks to our partners in Southern California, HRTV. The following piece you're about to watch was presented to us by, once again, HRTV. First up on today's program, we look back at the amazing career of Lost in the Fog and the love by his connection for this wonderful race off, Lost in the Fog. Lost in the Fog captured the imagination of the public and the hearts of his owner and trainer after rattling off 10 straight wins. Lost in the Fog, remember his name. It's a very impressive debut. He just had a lot of class. You know, champions are full of ability, but it's everything else that goes along with it. And whatever it is, they all have it, and, and he did. Razor sharp to win the Arizona Juvenile. <laughs> It's a great experience. We went all over the country with him. We got him running in Florida, New York, you name it. And everywhere we went, he was the favorite. It was, you know, the anticipation, and it was really exciting. A wonderful trip, dream come true. The dream ended in New York with a hard fight in the Breeders' Cup. But what Gilchrist didn't know was that their colt by lost soldier was fighting a different battle with cancer. I probably will never forgive myself for running that horse the last time I ran him, which was down in Calder. Uh, the horse was not right, and uh, it's not that he was that far wrong, I just knew that he wasn't at his best. I think his greatest race was back at Churchill Downs when he won the Aristides. And at the time we know he, he did have those tumors which we weren't aware of. And he still comes on and he wins that race with a 109 buyer figure or something. That's absolutely incredible. After he was diagnosed at UC Davis, Lost in the Fog was brought back to the barn to spend his final days at home with the only family he knew. They were actually gonna uh, euthanize him the next day. And I got about halfway home and I just said, you know, I just can't let that happen. And I went back and the horse was there and he kind of looked up at me and uh, if he could have talked, he just said, hey, you know, there's a few good days left here. You know, everyone treated him really good, gave him all the goodies and stuff. And Greg's tack room was full of flowers and apples and carrots from all over the country. It's absolutely incredible. I didn't get a lot of sleep during that month. Uh, I was waking up a lot at night and it was just, because it was becoming apparent to me that I knew the day was going to come. Hard to believe, you know, because the horse looked good. <laughs> so it, it, it just didn't kind of didn't sink in at that time that this horse was dying, you know, until the latter last day, actually, when I see him. It was an easy decision to make, but it was a hard one to go through with. There was just a couple of us there, and uh, we just laid him down in the stall, and uh, he went very quietly and uh, I, I think he knew and I think he was wanting to go. So uh, he went out just like the warrior that he was. I mean, he, if you would have been in a war, he'd have been the guy you'd want in the foxhole with you, I'll tell you. Lost in the Fog made a lasting impression with his connections, but they were not alone. The discerning eye of the racing community was watching every move. The night only got that Eclipse Award was just un, totally unbelievable. But to have this horse, you know, best sprinter in the whole country, if not the world, you know, that I would be fortunate enough to get that horse was an experience that you, I can't express it to you, that's all. It's, it's why that uh, they only give out one of those Eclipse Awards for each category is because there is only one horse that deserves him. 
While Gilchrist and Alio dealt with the loss of their star, a young colt with a striking blaze stepped in to fill the void. And Smokey Stover blasts clear of Midwesterner. Brought back thoughts of the fog the first thing when I saw those orange colors come flying around the turn and win by 10. I was ecstatic. I mean, he brought it 108 or something to change. Look at him cruise under a throttle hold. Smokey Stover by six lengths. Certainly this is a good horse, but um, right now he's about 900,000 behind him and a whole bunch of graded races. So he has a whole lot to prove. Smokey would get his chance in the Sunshine Million Sprint against Grade 1 winners Bordenero and Proud Tower 2. And no way they go to a good start. We were laying third right where we wanted to be in the garden spot. Smokey Stover now coming with a big run. And as they went into the turn, uh, you could see that Bordenero and, and Smokey Stover were both going to make their move. And I'm thinking, you know, this is a pretty good test right here when you're moving with Bordenero. I started getting really excited, you know. And to see him come on and run like he did. And they can't say he didn't beat anybody today. I think old Lost the Fog might have been up there today and give this horse a little kick in the butt there about the quarter pole. You know, he'd have been proud of him. While Smokey Stover jumped up and captured their imagination, Lost in the Fog is never very far from their thoughts. Lost in the Fog is one in a million. He's in a, he's in a class by himself. And then we think of all the others. This is a good horse, but he, I mean, Lost in the Fog was the greatest. Lost in the Fog wins in the sunshine. He just elevated everybody's game around the barn, including mine. And uh, there's not a day that, that goes by that I don't think about him. I still haven't put another horse back in, in stall six in my barn, I can tell you that. Don't go away. The Sport of Kings will be right back. Without a doubt, the toughest job at any racetrack is the starting gate. And if you're wondering why, take a look. You stand inside a gate on a, on a four inch ledge and stuff a 1,100 pound horse beside you and you surround yourself by 20,000 pounds of steel. Every now and then, things go wrong. The rush of being in there with a horse. When you get up in that gate with them horses and you feel that power, you feel the power of them horses in your hands. You gotta be able to trust each one of these guys in your life. You know, I mean, things get hairy in there, you gotta make sure one of these guys come today. This is the greatest job in the world. I wouldn't trade this job for anything. The fear's there, you know, my heart's racing, the adrenaline rush. I'm, I'm scared every time. I know these owners and trainers and the jockeys, everyone puts in all their time and it all comes down at the start. Your heart's just going 100 miles an hour and you're just waiting for something to happen. Every time the doors come open, it's a rush. Well, once you get out and you're like, yeah, you gotta get a good break or something like that, or if your horse wins, it's a good feeling, man. You're like, I did that. It's just, uh, you know, all about when those doors come open, it's the rush. They all leave there together, you know, and go by me. It's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> Today, keep the horses and the riders safe. Again, just bless us, Father. Remind us how much you love us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, man. Thanks, God bless you. God bless you. Starting gate job is one of the most dangerous jobs that, uh, other than a race car driver, jockey. You're in there really wrestling a thousand pound animal. He takes your bumps and bruises, and 90% of the time, no one even complains about it. You know, they get beat up and they just go on with it. It's part of the job. There's times when a horse will rear up and throw it, fling you right down in the dirt, and you'll be down in the mud before you knew it. And now you got a horse up on top of you, you know, stomping on you and this and that. I remember one time I, I looked up and I was looking at that horse's belly and crawled out between his legs. Uh, I was looking for daylight in that starting gate. If you don't have a love and you don't have you don't have the the will to learn, you will get hurt. Our job is one of the most important jobs in the racetrack as far as protecting the riders, protecting the horses. We come last. The jockeys are right there, so you're safe. You, you want to make sure that they're safe. 
and the horses are safe at the same time. So you you just you're always looking around. The horse can come up and he just be rambunctious and just wild, and you're basically trying to calm him, tame him down. The horse rears up and unseats the rider, throws him out the back. Hopefully, there's somebody there to catch him. We load horses in the starting gate in uh, race situations. Make sure that the horses are standing on their feet perfectly or as, as good as we can get them. Heads are straight, jockeys are tied on, waiting for the break. Immediately, everybody swarms the animal. You know, to try and keep him from moving and trashing and kicking something that might hurt himself or, or breaking a leg or something. You try and be as calm and as relaxed as possible to keep the animal as calm as relaxed as possible. And there's several different things we can do to slow a horse down. You get up in there and you kind of whisper in his ear and you talk to him and you rub on him. And one of my favorite moves is to reach in and grab his tongue and just pull his tongue out of his mouth. And he'll sit there and he, you, know, you kind of see it in the horse's eyes, like, what the heck are you doing to me? You know, but he stops doing what he's doing. It's very important that he does it before the last horse goes in the gate because the starter is looking for that, that first second of silence. When you get that, Start it, you know, starter goes right there. When the last horse comes in, uh, it's just up to uh, all my guys in the gate, the jockeys, you know, we're all working together and they're keen on that last horse. You don't get that split second of silence and then it goes. Out the back, one's gonna go. The one's gonna break right through the front doors. Gate's closed, all set. Nice ones, huh? All right, Nancy, let's do it. I'm the start of the races here at Santa Anita. When they all get in that gate, it's up to me to get them out as best as best as I can here. A good day is just, you know, everything was safe, and I gave everybody, you know, an even break. A good day is when they all leave there together. Every single guy in this gate, when that gate opens, they want to be the first horse out of the gate. Every one of us are just competitive as the riders are. I wouldn't change my life for nothing. For nothing. I wouldn't even change it for nothing. This game has been good to me. It's the best game in the world played outdoors. We all have to work together, you know, to keep it safe. Uh, so we're, you know, a pretty tight-knit family. Hector five, Roger six, Gilly seven, Renee eight, Kelly nine, Mike 11, Eddie 12. Thank you, Poppy. I just try to match guys with, you know, sometimes the guy work with a horse in the morning and get to know that horse. You know, maybe a stronger guy with a little stouter horse it might work. And sometimes a horse that's really nervous, you need a guy that's really light-handed too, you know, that, can just get along with him. My brother Kelly, who actually got me this job back in 85, uh, and some of these other guys, I've worked with him for more than 20 years. They're all great, they're all great since I started every one of them. And, and, but I trust every single one of these guys on this gate with my life, and I have to. When we pack horses, if your guy lets go, that horse at any point can kick you. You and no matter what happens are gonna lock on that guy's arm, and whatever it takes, you're gonna hold onto his arm or he'll hold onto your arm. You're having a bad day with somebody and you're not getting along with them. You know, you know that if something goes wrong, that guy's still gonna be there to save you. You know, and, and that's all I need to know. I think all of them are a bunch of nuts, including me. You gotta be working here with, with race horse on the start gate, you gotta be half crazy. Don't go away. The sport of kings will be right back. Among the many prestigious and historical races in North America is the San Juan Capistrano. The race is run at San Anita Racetrack in Southern California, and it is steeped in tradition and history, and as you're about to see, this is what horse racing is all about. The early years of the San Juan were noticeably different than today, with the race originally contested on the main track at a mile and an eighth. In 1940, the San Juan was even restricted to three-year-olds at a mile and a sixteenth. 
Long before his victory in the 1940 Big Cap, Seabiscuit, in his first season at Santa Anita, won the 1937 San Juan Capistrano. Owner Charles Howard and trainer Tom Smith also captured the 1940 and 41 San Juans with Meeland. In 1950, owner Charles Howard sent